Well, guys and gals, and this is part three of the official Pokemon handbook by Maria S. Barbo. This is a deluxe collector's edition. And um, we're going to put that to the side for now. And in the last episode, we covered Pokemon number seven through 26. So we are ready for number 27. But first, I do want to give the copyright information here. This is a book by Maria S. Barbo, and Pokemon is copyright to Nintendo and Game Freak. Because they basically came up with the game. Anyways, with all that copyright information out of the way, we are going to read about and learn about Sandshrew, which is number 77. I'm 77. No, 77 is Ponita. Number 27 is Sans... Sans Sand shrew. Okay. It is um, the ground element. It is a mouse type, kind of like Pikachu. Um, its height is two feet tall, and it weighs 26 pounds, and it knows scratch. You can also learn slash poison. Oh, slash poison sting, swift, fury swipes, and sand attack. It is good against electric, fire, poison, and rock, and bad against grass and bug. It evolves normally at level 22. It says, Sandshrew burrow deep underground in hot, dry places. When Sandshrew uses a sand attack, enemies have a hard time fighting back. Sandshrew makes great pets if you live near a desert. But they're also tough to train because most of them are picky eaters. I didn't realize that, so I learned something new. Anyways, next we are going to talk about Sandshrew. Again, again, this is another one of my favorite Pokemon right here, Sandshrew. Uh, and it's number 28, by the way, in the Pokedex. It is also the ground element and a mouse type, but this one is 3 foot 3 inches tall and weighs 65 pounds. It knows Scratch, Sand Attack, and Slash. But it can also learn Poison, Sting, Swift, and Fury Swipes. It is good against Electric, Fire, Poison, and Rock, and it's bad against Grass and Bug. It evolves normally, but... It is already at maximum evolution, so it can evolve no more, at least not in this generation. A wind threatened sand slash curls up into a ball just like a porcupine, or as I would say, an arm a, a five a three band armadillo. No, there, there is an armadillo that um, rolls into a ball. Also a pangolin, which this is also based off of in real life. The name in Japanese is sand pan. In other words, sand pangolin, otherwise. Of course, the Japanese name for Sandshrew is sand, and this is sand pan. For sand pangolin, and it has pangolin like scales on its back. It says here, um, and pangolin also roll up into a ball, except I don't think they roll. Anyways, when threatened, Sand Slash curls up into a ball, just like a porcupine. The spines on its back protect it from predators, and then it can roll along the ground to attack, escape, or hunt for food with its fury swipe technique. Sand Slash can attack two to five times in a row. Be sure not to leave this Pokemon out where someone can step on it. Ouch. Yes. I agree. Ouch. Okay, it says... Although most, under, although most Pokemon can understand people, each species has its own language. The language is made up of a Pokemon's own name. In the cartoon, Meowth is the only Pokemon that can speak a human language. That's true. Though technically, I would imagine that Ditto and Mew probably could too because they were, made, they, they were basically... Well, Mew was, was one of the first Pokemon, I think. Unless you take into account Ar Arceus or Arceus. But that's a different story. Anyways, let's go on to um, Nidoran Female, number 29. It says here, Nidoran, its um, element is poison. It's a, the poison pen Pokemon. It is one foot, four inches tall, weighs 15 pounds. It knows growl and tackle, and it can learn scratch, poison sting, tail whip, bite, fury swipes, double kick. It is good against grass and bug, but bad against poison, ground, rock, and ghost. Evolves normally at level 16. It says here, The female Nidoran has small poisonous barbs that make her very dangerous. Her horns may be smaller than a male Nidoran spikes, but they are just as powerful. 
Community service, volu- uh, community service volunteer at Mount Fuji's abandoned Pokemon house in Lavender Town. Share, share your love with a Pokemon that doesn't have a trainer. That's nice that they promote that. And this is the um, evolution line because there's a Nidorina and there's the Needle Queen. Okay, here we go. It probably won't say it, but I'll, I've got some information about Needle Queen too. But anyways, this is Nidorina number 30. Uh, it is poison, uh, poison element. It is the poison pin type Pokemon. It weigh, its height is two, two feet, seven inches tall, weighs 44 pounds. It knows growl, tackle, scratch, but it can learn poison sting, tail whip, bite, fury swipes, double kick. It's good against grass and bug, bad against poison, ground, rock, ghost, and it evolves using a moonstone. Which I just recalled, yeah. That's why why Neo King is probably one of the best Pokemon in Gen 1 to get early on. Anyways, that's not the point. Anyways, we are ready for Nido Queen, which is number... Oh, wait. It says here, Nidorina does not evolve by getting more experience. You need to use a Moonstone to turn her into into a Nido Queen. Because a female Nidorina's horns grow slowly, she likes to use her teeth and claws in battle instead. Now, we are ready for... Number 31, Needle Queen. Po- it is the poison ground element. It is the drill type Pokemon. And its height is 4 feet, 3 inches, t- three inches tall, and weighs 132 pounds. It knows tackle, scratch, tail whip, but it can learn poison sting and body slam. Good against electric and fire, it is bad against ground and ghost. It evolves using a moonstone. Uh, Nino Queen, on the other hand, favors her heavy but powerful tail. She likes to use her massive size for strong attacks like the Body Slam. The hard scales on Nidoran, on Nido Queen, rather. Did I say Nidoran? I meant Nido Queen. Nido Queen give uh, her lots of protection. Also, it should be noted that Nido Queen, Nido Queen cannot breed. You cannot breed any Pokemon with Nido Queen. They apparently become sterile when they evolve. Which isn't the case with Neo King. Okay, now we're ready for Nidoran Male, which is number 32. Uh, it is the poison element. It is the poison pin type Pokemon. Its height is one foot, one foot eight inches tall. It weighs 20 pounds. It knows Leer and Tackle and other techniques are... It can also learn Horn Attack, Poison Sting, Focus Energy, Fury Attack, Horn Drill, and Double Kick. And Horn Drill, I believe, in Gen 1 was still a one-hit KO, but I'm not sure. Gra- uh, it's good against grass and bug, but it's bad against poison, ground, rock, and ghost. It evolves normally at level 16. It says, Nidoran males have ears that stiffen at any sign of danger. The barbs on their heads release a powerful poison. And this is their, the evolution line. There's Nidorino and Neo King. We are ready for number 33, which is Nidorino, which is the poison element. It is the poison pin type Pokemon, and it weighs, its height is 2 foot 11 inches tall. It weighs, it weighs 43 pounds. It knows Leer, Tackle, Horn Attack, but it can learn Poison Sting, Focus Energy, Fury Attack, Horn Drill, and Double Kick. It's good against Grass and Bug. It is bad against Poison, Ground, Rock, and Ghost, and it evolves using a Moonstone similar to Nido Queen. It says, The horn on, Nido, on Nidorino's head contains a strong poison. At higher levels, its horn drill technique can defeat an enemy in seconds. Keep it away from small children and animals. Okay, and it says here, In battle, Nidorino often uses focus energy to increase its power before attacking. Use that pause to attack before it attacks your Pokemon. We are ready for Nido King, and I've got some extra information about Nido King just from information and YouTube videos that I have seen. It is a poison ground element. It is the drill type Pokemon. It is four foot seven inches tall. It weighs one hundred and thirty seven pounds. It knows tackle, horn attack, and poison sting, but it can learn thrash. Um, good. It's good against electric and fire types, but it's bad against ghost and, ghost and ground types. And it evolves using a moonstone. It says, Needle King is a powerful warrior. He wraps his strong tail around his prey and crushes 
its bones. Also, it has a very, very wide, very, very wide um, selection of TMs it can learn, which makes it very, very powerful and desirable. Okay, we are ready for Clefay, Clefairy, um, which is number 35. And let's see, it is a... It is a normal type. It's a normal element, rather, but it is the fairy-type Pokemon. This was before fairy-type became a type. Uh, it's two, foot, two feet tall, and it weighs 17 pounds. It knows pa- pound and growl, and, but it can also learn sing, double slap, minimize, metronome, defense, curl, and light screen. It's good against none, but bad against rock. Later, they made um, normal weak against fighting as well, I believe. And it evolves using a moonstone. Okay, the friendly and peaceful Clefairy is admired by many for its magical powers. You will have to search long and hard to find one, though it is very rare. Oh, find one, though. Oh, find one, though. It is very rare. Its special metronome attack allows it to attack in many different ways. Some believe that the Clefairy have formed their own society inside Mount Moon, where they pray to the Moonstone. According to legend, the stone fell from the moon hundreds of years ago. Now, it says here, Pokemon pick, okay. It says, Elemental stones like the fire, water, leaf, thunder, and moonstones are needed to evolve some Pokemon. They are found in dungeons or at the Celadon City department store. The Moonstone is the rarest, but did you know that there aren't enough elemental stones for the 17 species of Pokemon that need them to evolve. Special stones are in short supply, so use them wisely. And this is the evolution chain. There's Clefairy and Clefable. And we are going to go to... Um, it's also theorized that the Clefairy are actually aliens from another planet, or like from the moon or something. But I don't know. Okay. Number 36 is Clefable. What we have here is its element is normal, and it is the fairy-type Pokemon. Not to be confused with the fairy-type Pokemon of today, that are actually fairy-type, like Ralts. It weigh, its height is four, 4 feet, 3 inches tall, and uh, it weighs 88 pounds. It knows Sing, Double Slap, Minimize, Metronome, and it learns no other attacks. Uh, it's good against none, bad against rock, and evolves using a Moonstone. Clefable is one of the rarest Pokemon in the world. You will need to use a Moonstone to turn a Clefairy into a Clefable. Uh, once you do, your Clefable will not be able to learn any new techniques without special tools. You will, you may want to make sure it knows a variety of techniques before you evolve it. Uh, Clefable is very shy, is a very shy fairy that is hardly ever seen. It runs and hides the second it thinks people are around. You'll need to be extra loving and gentle with this Pokemon to gain its trust. And that was Clefable. We are ready for number 37, which is Vulpix. Um, okay. It's um, Fire Elemental. It's Fire Element. It is a fox, the fox-type Pokemon, and it is 2 feet tall and weighs 22 pounds. It knows Ember and Tail Whip. It can also learn Quick Attack, Roar, Confuse Ray, Flamethrower, Fire Spin. It is good against Grass, Ice, and Bug, but bad against Fire, Water, Rock, and Dragon. And it evolves using a Fire Stone. There's the Evolution Chain, and there's Nine Tails. A cute exterior hides inner strength. This Fire Pokemon is extremely rare. As Vulpix grows older, its tail splits at the tip. Vulpix likes to confuse its enemy, then it uses the powerful Flames in its fire spin technique to block an opponent an opponent from moving. Yep. We are on to 38, which is nine tails. And it has nine tails, apparently. Also, the um, Japanese name of Vulpix here is Rokan, I believe, which stands for, uh, like, Six, Fox, Huge Curse, and Gas Oven, or something like that. Anyway, here is number 38, Nine Tails. Uh, its um, element is fire. It is the fox-type Pokemon. It is, um, is that a three? Okay, that's a three. 
Uh, it's three feet, seven inches tall, and weighs 44 pounds. It knows ember, tail whip, quick attack, roar, and it can learn no other techniques except by TM. Uh, it is good against grass, ice, and bug. It is bad against fire, water, rock, and dragon, and it evolves using a fire stone. Uh, the only way to add a nine tails to your Pokemon team is to carefully raise a Vulpix and then use a Fire Stone to evolve it. Nine Tails is a very smart Pokemon that likes plotting revenge against its enemies. If you grab one of its tails, Nine Tails may put a thousand-year curse on you. And that is basically the plot of the Mystery Dungeon DX, I believe, is somebody grabbed a Nine Tails tail or something and it got cursed or something. I don't remember. I might be wrong. But anyways, we are ready for Jigglypuff, which is number 39. It is a normal element. It is the balloon-type Pokemon, and it is 1 foot 8 inches tall and weighs 12 pounds. It knows Sing. Uh, other techniques it can learn are Pound, Disable, Defense Curl, Double Slap, Rest, Body Slam, and Double Edge. It is good against nothing, bad against rock, and it evolves using a Moonstone. Up next... oh. Looks can be deceiving just because this Pokemon has big, friendly eyes and makes a and, and makes a cuddly, cute pet. Oh, and makes a cu- cutely, uh, cuddly, cute pet doesn't mean it can't fight. Jigglypuff's sing attack can soothe even the toughest Pokemon into Dreamland. Then it's time for a pounding as soon as they they're snoozing. Jigglypuff are very rare, so if magical and mysterious Pokemon are your thing, take time to search the long grass outside Mount Moon for this ball of fluff. Okay, this is the evolution chain, and then there's Wigglytuff right there. Eventually they added Igglytuff, which was the baby form. Anyways, it says, I'm right here. Now we are ready for number 40, Wigglytuff, which is the normal element, and it is a balloon-type Pokemon. It is 3 feet 3 inches tall and weighs 26 pounds. It knows Sing, Disable, Defense, Curl, Double Slap, but it can learn no other techniques except through TMs. It is good against nothing. And, um... It is bad against Rock. And it evolves using a Moonstone. Now, let's see. You don't want to mess with this big-eyed Pokemon when it gets angry. Wigglytuff sucks in air and inflates its soft, rubbery body like a giant balloon. At super size, it can scare off even the meanest enemies. How do you explain that to mom and dad? Okay. And that was number 40, Wiggly Tough. Um, we are to number 41, which is Zubat. Give me just a sec here. Okay. We are almost done here. I was just checking to make sure. 41 is Zubat. It is pronounced Zubat. It is a poison flying element, and it is a, the bat, a bat-type bat Pokemon. It is 2 feet, 7 inches tall, weighs 17 pounds, and knows leech life. It can also learn supersonic, bite, confuse ray, wing attack, and haze. Uh, it is good against grass, bug, and fighting, but it's bad against ground, poison, rock, ghost, and electric, and it evolves normally at level 22. And then there is gold bat right there. Um, next we are... Re- oh, wait, this is here. Zubat live in colonies or groups in dark places like caves and tunnels and uses ultrasonic waves, a built-in radar system to move around in the dark to fight enemies. Their leech life technique sucks the, the energy out of opponents and their own energy is increased. Now, we are ready for number 42, which is Golbat. It is a poison flying element. It is the bat a bat type Pokemon, and its height is five, <clears throat> five feet three inches tall. Uh, it weighs 121 pounds. It knows Leech Life, Screech, Bite, and Confuse Ray, and it can learn, let me find it, Wing Attack and Haze. It is good against Grass, Bug, and Fighting, but it's bad against Poison Rock, Ghost, and Electric, and it evolves normally, though it is currently at maximum evolution until Crobat came along in a later generation. The fully evolved Golbat feeds on its victim's energy using its sharp fangs. Golbat can drain 48 cubic inches 
of blood per bite. Its haze technique confuses an opponent, so it can't tell if the Golbat is an enemy or a friend. That's a little bit dark. But also pretty cool. Okay, now we're ready for Oddish. We're going to do the Oddish line next. And then we will um, probably stop at number 46, because 20 seems to be pretty good. Okay, now we're ready for Oddish. Oddish is a grass poison element. It is a weed type Pokemon. Um, height is 1 foot, 8 inches tall, Twelve. it weighs 12 pounds, and it knows absorb. It, but it can also learn poison, powder, stun, spore, sleep, powder, acid, uh, acid um, petal dance, and solar beam. Uh, it is good against water types, it's bad against fire, poison, flying, dragon, and ghost. And it evolves normally at level 21. It says, Oddish is, well, odd. During the day, this weed-like Pokemon keeps its head buried in the ground. At night, it wanders around, planting seeds and sprinkling pollen as it walks. It likes to poison or stun its enemies, and then it drains its energy. Oh, then drain its and then it drains its energy. At higher levels, this combo grass poison Pokemon has many special abilities. Its petal dance hurts and confuses other Pokemon. Oddish uses Solar Beam to increase its own energy on its first turn, so it can have an extra powerful attack on its second turn. There we have Gloom and Wild Plume. That is the evolution chain. Up next, we have number 44, which is Gloom. Uh, it's a grass poison element. We type 2 feet 7 inches tall, weighs 19 pounds. It knows absorb poison powder, stun, store, stun spore, rather, and sleep powder. It can learn, additionally, acid, petal dance, and solar beam. It's good against water, but bad against fire, poison, flying dragon, ghost, and it evolves using a leaf stone. Like most grass Pokemon, Gloom can't move very well, but it doesn't have to move when attacks like Poison Powder and Stun Spore. Oh, it doesn't have to move with attacks like Poison Powder and Stun, and Stun Spore. The liquid that oozes out of its mouth isn't drool; it's a nectar that Gloom uses to get the enemy to come closer. When Gloom feels as if it's in danger, it starts to smell really bad. We are ready for number 45, which is Vile Plume. Vile Plume. It is a grass poison element. It is a flower type Pokemon. It is based off of the corpse flower, which also explains its smell. Uh, it is 3 feet, 11 inches tall, weighs 41 pounds. It, it knows poison powder, stun spores, sleep powder, and it can learn no other techniques except through TM. Good, it's as good against water, it's bad against fire, poison, flying dragon, ghost, and it evolves using a leaf stone. It says here. Once you've used a leaf stone to turn your gloom into vile plume, its big head will get heavy and hard to hold up. Fascinating. Now, let me just check my notes here real quick. We will then do Paris, and I hate to do it, but then we will do Parasect in the next reading. So, we are at number 46, Paris. It is a bug grass element, and it is a mushroom-type Pokemon. It is one foot high, weighs 12 pounds, and no scratch. Its other techniques it can learn are Stun Spore, Leech Life, Spore, Slash, and Growth. It is good against Psychic, Water, Ground, and Rock, but it's bad against Ghost, Flying, Fighting, Fire, Poison, Bug, Dragon and evolves normally at level 24. Let's find out more about this Pokemon. Paris is a combination of bug and grass, is a combo bug-grass Pokemon. It has insect-like claws and rare mushrooms on its back. Its relationship with the mushrooms is an example of symbi symbiosis. Uh, the mushroom-like pods take nutrients from their bug host. In return, the mushrooms shoot out clouds of stun, sp of stun spores to stun almost any opponent. When it isn't fighting, Paris burrows underground to suck tree roots. That's very fascinating. And the evolution is it evolves into Parasect. At level 24. But with that, we are going to call this quits. It has been 20 more. 
and doing 20 at a time seems to be a, at a good pace. So, with that being said, this has been a reading from the official Pokemon Handbook Deluxe Collector's Edition by Marie, Maria S. Barbo. And that's that. If you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload. And um, also, if you want to support me in any ways, all that information will be in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone. And have a great day.